Hello again, Gary Wilkerson here. You're joining us on the Gary Wilkerson podcast. I'm here with my friend and coworker, uh, Keith Holloway. If you've been watching our past episodes, you know who he is, you know who I am. So we want to get right into it. We've been talking about the attributes of God. And today we're talking about, the, and yes, last week and today, talking about the judgment of God, one of the more uh, lower viewed attributes of God, one that is held in less high esteem. And because it's missing, we don't know God in fullness. So we want to bring God into the fullness of the revelation of his glory. That was Paul's prayer, wasn't it? That you might know him in the, in the uh, fullness of his revelation, uh, that you might know the the, the heights and the depth and the rest of the love of God and the love of God is encompassed in all these things we're talking about. Uh, last week we talked, we defined a bit of, uh, of this and then we talked about the Old Testament forms of judgment and how God has not changed. He's the, he's the judge in the future. He's the judge in the past. He's an unchanging God. So the question comes, is there something that happened that changed God's mind for a season? Some might call it the age of grace. Is, is Are we right now at a time where God has ceased from judging people, judging nations, judging uh, certain sins, or is God still judging today? I'll, g- I'll give you my two cents first and then let you take it from there. Um, Romans chapter 1, 2, and 3 probably has the, the, the best answer to this right from Scripture rather than our own opinion to this. And, and, in, and, and there's two types of judgment that are spoken of in and, and, and chapter 2. The headline of this is, um, Therefore, you have no excuse, O man, every one of you who judges. Uh, you're passing judgment on another. But, but we know that, and it goes on to say that God is the judge. And so he, uh, in, in Revelation, in Romans chapter 3, he talks about the the righteous judgments uh, of God um, that uh, let God be true. And though everyone is a liar, it is written that you may be justified in your words and prevail when you are judged. Uh, none is righteous except God. He's the righteous judge. And so we see um, in you know, it's for, the, for these people in Romans that God is talking about, I was almost caught off guard, Keith, for a while there because I, I kept reading and it kept seeing like, well, wait a minute, God judged in the past. And we know in Revelation we see, and then some of the other scriptures of, of the, the the wrath of God to come and the judgments of God to come. As I was reading this passage, it almost seemed to be like, okay, you're storing up wrath to come or uh, for the wrath of God coming on that, uh, on that, on that judgment day that, uh, uh, chapter two, verse six, he will render each one according to his works. Uh, all of these things, God's judgment being passed, uh, seem to be uh, future oriented. Uh, the wrath of God to come, the day of judgment to come. But there's enough in here that, because that I had to go back and read it again when I did. Uh, for instance, Romans 1.18 says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and righteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Um, so this, this is a, um, it, it's clearly read in present tense uh, for the wrath of God is, re- it's not, it's not, it's going to be revealed. Uh, it is. Now this is a different wrath than the, the actual day of wrath where the, the full p- uh, penalty of sin and the judgment day, so to speak. I think this is a different type of wrath. Uh, this is kind of a wrath that's, and we'll talk about that in the weeks to come. This is a wrath that's different than that, but it's nonetheless uh, ju- the judgments of God are being revealed today. Now, not everybody agrees with that. Some people see there's almost like a, a pause in this age of grace. Uh, but but um, but um, you know, I'd love to get your take on that. Or um, and feel free to. I mean, if you uh, disagree with me on that, that's 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 why we're here together to iron sharpen iron and uh, and, and see, seeing uh, different scriptures from different point of views. So, what's your take on this? Yeah, uh, the the fact is that we discussed last week, and I think it's been made clear from Scripture, not just because we say it, but that God is a, is a just God, mm-hmm. and from Him comes a justness. Uh, it's seen in Him seeking out justice and Him executing judgments. So when we look at the Bible, and we talked about last week about the Old Testament, 
uh, he is seen very clearly, maybe even more so uh, to some that he's more uh, judgmental, if you will, in the Old Testament. When you see that he did execute uh, judgments in the Old Testament, when you find that he had the right to judge uh, people, families, communities, cities, states, nations, uh, then you have to even just by logic, you have to be honest and say the God that could and would and did also in our days, he he has the uh, divine prerogative uh, and the sin is sin. It, uh, there's no Old Testament sin and New Testament sin. Um, and um, so uh, to answer your question that you put out, does God judge today? I think the answer is yes. I think it's a definitive. I think it's an absolute. Uh, I think he judges uh, at every level. Uh, there are multitude of scriptures we could look at to say that uh, who and what God judges. But um, I think the question that is the follow up to does God judge today might be, um, you know, is he judging through the events that transpire in people's lives? Uh, and right now, you know, people are still dealing, even though it's uh, it's a real issue, the coronavirus. Many are becoming a bit tired of it and uh, trying to, you know, we want to move past it. But uh, trying to discern uh, how God is judging today, I think, is a is a big, uh, big issue. Mm -hmm. And we've got uh, I, and I and I'm not even going to bring up any names or illustrations, but just to say, I think that it's uh, our human nature to look at something, uh, judge it, and declare it to be something that God is doing. When I think that I see in the Bible that we should be a little more cautious than that. Um, God is the only one who can judge, and there's uh, scriptures in the in the Word of God that say that to to people, but especially believers, that we are to be discerning. We are to to seek out and to recognize and to uh, clearly discover truth, but we're not in the position of having all knowledge and all wisdom and understanding all things from all facets to be able to clear emphatically that this is the judgment of God and this judgment of God is because of this specific thing. Uh, the Old Testament, we see that clearly. Now, of course, we're looking at hind in hindsight, right, at the Old Testament. Think of the people living in Old Testament times. I don't think they uh, clearly understood everything, but by and large, it was the prophets who had a mandate, who had a position, a call, an enablement. They declared that this was a person's sin, a nation's sin, the ruler of a nation's sin, and therefore this is judgment. They saw it much clearer, much more uh, distinct than we do now. So is God judging today? Yes. Uh, is he judging at every level? I say yes, because he's already set, if you will, the premise for that. And uh, our our case today is to uh, try to understand uh, what is uh, or is not. Uh, I even hesitate to talk too much on this topic about trying to discern judgment because uh, we we just don't clearly see. I mean, for instance, and I, I hope this is a good illustration. I know a few years back there was a um, hurricane that was coming on the east coast of the U.S. And there was a uh, well-known minister on the east coast that began to pray and, you know, to, to pray against this hurricane. It was headed right for his state or for his region. He prayed and prayed and called people to pray across America. Well, and it's true that the hurricane did uh, bypass uh, that region and went up farther along the East Coast and hit in another area. Um, and so, you know, when you look at that, was that a the hurricane? Was that a uh, did it move because of an answer to prayer or did it move because of the air and sea currents? And if it did move because of prayer, was that uh, God not judging that region where that uh, minister was? Uh, did he think all of a sudden or did he have in his mind 
or change his mind that that area and those people were somehow now righteous because they prayed. And it, it went up and then it just slammed the coast somewhere else and devastated people's lives and ruined and killed. And so they were more wicked. You see, I just think I think the Bible would say to us that when we look at uh, these kind of things returning uh, about uh, judgments, I would say even though God is God of justice, he is just, he has the right, the prerogative, and he does judge. I think equally, Gary, uh, that the Bible shows that for the most part, God seems to be restraining his judgments. Yeah. Uh, he's He doesn't take delight in the death of the wicked. He's not rejoicing at ruining people's lives and their careers and their economies. Uh, why is because he desires to show mercy. Um, I should have written out that uh, verse, but I think it's in second Peter where uh, it says uh, something about he's being patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish. Uh, he can and he does execute judgments. But I, th I think that I see that he is very forbearing. He's being very patient. Uh, I know the New Testament speaks of him long suffering uh, with man. Uh, does that mean that he's uh, restraining his judgment in order to release wickedness? Not particularly that way, although that can happen. I think it's just demonstrating that the grace of God in judgment seems to jump out of the pages of Scripture that he is wanting men to repent. He's wanting to men to not wait until it takes judgment for them to turn, but turn now. The goodness of God should lead us uh, to repentance. And I think that I see that both Old and New Testament. I don't think the question should be, how could a loving God do this, or why is he judging? But really, why is a, a loving, but also a just God waiting so long? I mean, why is he being so merciful? Uh, he's much more merciful than we are. Think of something that happens in our lives. Uh, somebody cuts you off when you drive, your neighbor does something to your fence, or, you know, uh, somebody scratches your car with the key, man, we're ready to, you know, to behead them. We're ready to execute a strong judgment. And yet God is very loving and kind and restraining. Uh, so again, I think that pictures God is neither either or, but he's both and love and judgment. And uh, we have to, I think, just exercise caution when we're trying now to go around saying that this is this and this is that and God is doing this. Yeah, I, I agree. We have to exercise caution when it comes to the, the specifics. Um, I push back a little bit and say, I think we also have to caution the opposite of like ne it never being a judgment of God, uh, it, that it's always just the mercy of God. It's always, it's, um, or if there does something, hurricanes happen or floods happen or viruses happen, it's always just nature or, um, uh, happenstance, you know, that I think that's that belittles the power of God and, and it diminishes our prophetic calling on our life to, to, you know, if God is warning nations and we as prophets, priests, and followers and you know, ch children of God, you know, don't blow the trumpet, then, then it's, then it's on us as Ezekiel says. And so, uh, you know, I think, I think the, the, the tide has turned so much towards now when something happens, that you know, it's it's probably not God. It's probably just uh, nature. It's probably circumstances. Probably the, the effects of the fall or sin, and it's not God divinely moving and saying, "This is me. I'm doing this." You know, and and the scriptures uh, full of you know Jesus Himself in, um, in in Luke 19 says, "When you draw and when you drew the, near the city, He wept over it." There's the mercy you're talking about. Um, would that you even have known the day that things would make for peace. But now they're hidden from your eyes for the days will come upon you when your enemies and I uh, will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children with you. And uh, there will not be left a stone upon one another because you did not know the time of your visitation. I think it's important we understand and, and be unafraid as pastors and leaders uh, to say we don't know. You know, if, you know, I think where people go wrong, say this is judgment because of this particular sin this particular sexual type of sin or this particular type of activity that some per persons do. Now God is judging this region because of that. Uh, um, and also be cautious about, 
you know, because when the judgments of God come, they they tend to fall. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. So when there's a hurricane, and if the God, if it is by God's hand, uh, allowing that to happen, then you know, there's not. It's not just sort of all of a sudden, you know, the the, the people who are uh, sinners get their house torn down, and the Christian like, oh look, my house is still standing. You know, judgment falls. Uh, on the whole city, so to speak, and and all are affected by that. But Jesus was totally unafraid to speak and saying, "This this is our you know, this is the, the Godhead is involved in this. Uh, you know, th- this is what will happen as a result of your sin. You know, you know even be prophetic uh, about it." And um, you know, I, I think the, I think the pendulum has swung way too far over to the side of, you know, uh, oh, this couldn't be God. He's too he's too good for this. Mm-hmm. He's too nice for this, and and therefore you know we miss. The, the opportunity to do what God is trying to do, you know, how, how, how sad it would be that Jesus in his grace, as you're saying, and mercy would bring judgment in order to bring repentance uh, and maybe even revival to the church and renewal. And, and we who have the opportunity, opportunity to announce it um, would begin to diminish it and say, well, you know, God's hands may not be, may or may not be in, in this Personally, I think his hand is in a whole lot more, uh, you know, in in the form of judgment. Um, it's not like some secondary attribute of God, as we're talking about the attributes of God. It's not like his mercy and his love and his grace are really big. Uh, his judgment is kind of every once in a while, it kind of he just sort of has to pick pick that up a little bit and throw some seeds of judgment out there. It's it's just as real and vital and alive as any other thing, and, and yet it's probably the least preached about, the least spoken of. And when it is spoken of today in our culture, number one, uh, there's an uproar. How dare a preacher stand in his pulpit and say, God is still judging today. Number two, even the churches themselves, right, are saying like, yeah, no, let tone that down. That's that's too, too, too aggressive. But, you know, all the prophets were that way. Jesus was that way. Uh, Paul warned that way. And he's the one who wrote Romans about the wrath of God to come. Um, you know, and even you're, you know, um, you're, you're facing this wrath even now and uh, Jesus weeping over Jerusalem or foretelling the destruction of the walls. He actually looked at the temple walls and told those standing there, says, you're not going to die before you see those walls come tumbling down and the city will be surrounded and your children will be crying and the mothers will be weeping. Um, you know, this is this is a prophetic warning of not Satan's work, although Satan was involved. But it was it was the hand of God saying, uh, I want to, you know, as scriptures say, shake everything that can be shaken. And so, um, you know, I, I believe that that this is here. Um, let me just take a minute and say why, you know, uh, how, how does the Bible speak about these judgments of God if they're real for today? Well, number one, I say the judgment of God um, uh, hands over the impenitent or the unrepentant. Uh, to the hardening of the heart in their life. That's the the Romans passage that, you know, I'll give you over to your sin. That in itself is a judgment. It doesn't have to be a hurricane. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be a, a, a virus. It can just be the hardening of people's hearts. Number two, I believe God just does judge nations and punishes. He did it in Israel. He did it in the Garden of Eden. He did it, um, you know, he, he did it in Jesus's day. He's going to do it again. And it, it's no less happening uh you know, it, it, God's not on a sabbatical from part of his attributes. He's he's judging as much today. There'll be a fine, number three, there'll be a final judgment. And we both know that and we've studied that. Uh, the book of Revelation, Thessalonians, other, Second Peter, First Peter, talk about the final judgments at the end of history. Um, the uh, Then the individuals sometimes being judged. Uh, I think I mentioned that to you just reading recently about Herod, you know, and then how you know, it wasn't the devil that filled him with, you know, the worms inside of him and killed him over. It was, you know, God pronounced that judgment on him. So God, I think, actually brings judgment on particular individuals. And so so judgment, and then the final one, the form of judgment, I believe, is the judgment. And we talked about this as well. The judgment of God placed upon Jesus, the wrath of God put on Jesus uh, in order that whoever believes on him would not perish uh, the wages of sin is death. So he, we all deserve death, but Jesus paid the price for that death. So those are the forms of judgment, and I think these judgments take on the 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 the, the two different forms. One is a redemptive judgment. God 
trying to do something in a nation or a people or even a church, judgment beginning in the house of the Lord, beginning to, to try to stir and waken and call back and woo and have that heart, that yearning to come back to me, to repent, revive, uh, be awakened, be uh, move away from your compromise and your sin, come back to your first love. That's, you know, those, those can be judgments, um, uh, maybe with a small J, uh, of, of God. And, and then there's, so that's, that's the, the sort of the redemptive. And then I think there's the punitive judgment of God, which is where God says enough is enough. Um, this judgment is not for, uh, and this is the harshest form of judgment. This is not for redemptive purposes. This is for final judgment. You have, you have crossed the line and, and now, now, you know, you, uh, and, and these are things that I think they're coming uh, upon the face of the earth. Um, where God pours out his wrath and, and his judgments on on people and on nations because of their impenitent heart that they have not turned from God. And so that's why that's why the Bible says we warn people. You know, uh, if there was no judgment, we don't need to warn them anything. And so, so I know that was kind of a long rant, um, but, but I, think, I think both of us are saying somewhat the same thing, that we both believe judgment is real and alive today. Uh, I might be seeing it more... I don't know, just kind of growing up in the household of my father, David Wilkerson, who was, that had that prophetic mantle on his life and constantly was speaking of, you know, the, the, his book, The Vision, that was the idea of God uh, bringing judgment on, on particularly on America uh, for, for, for its sin. And so and I don't think God has backed off that. And, um, you know, we're running a little long time, but uh, I, I would like to maybe even next week go one more episode on this topic because I want to go uh, through a little bit of recent church history and talk about uh, some men, uh, uh, Bishop Dow in England, uh, J.C. Ryle, if you've ever read his book, Holiness, is an amazing book. Uh, and these men speak very differently than the modern pastor or modern, modern preacher uh, who are very shy about uh, allowing the word judgment to be pronounced in the church or in the pulpit. Um, and, yeah. and they called for saying, you know, the things that were happening in their day they said, this is clearly the judgment of God. It's clearly to warn us. It's clearly to waken us up. And so I think we lose an opportunity to awaken our own hearts and the churches if we don't call it what it is uh, without saying it's, you know, this person's fault or it's that, you know, it's the Republicans fault or it's the Democrats fault or it's, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's, the, it's, it's all of our fault. It's all, you know, it's the, it's, it's the sin. And yet, and yet maybe there are, might even be. Uh, you know, I'm not God, and you're not. So we, we're not here sitting here to say that God can't say it's 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 because of abortion, or because of sexual immorality that that I'm going to judge nations. So um, let's close with one last thing, and then uh, come back next week uh, to continue this topic. But the the the, the what are God's purposes? Um, you know, and I kind of touched on it briefly. Redemptive. Uh, and and then actually the the, the you know uh, what's that passage oh, vengeance the vengeance type judgment mm-hmm. vengeance is mine saith the Lord which is a New Testament repeated passage as well uh, but for us particularly um, uh, or for the church the judgment that falls on the house of God are are there some um, good uh, good outcomes from things that seem difficult for us to bear at the time do you see anything? good coming out of that, if we were to call any of these things judgments? Sure, uh, I do. And let me also be clear. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I did say that God is judging today. Yeah. No, yeah, I wasn't trying to put yeah. you down. He, he you is are. judging. My, what I said was, though, I think it's uh, probably best for the majority of us to exercise uh, wise caution in going around declaring that this is a judgment and this judgment is from God and it's from God because of this and it's for this purpose. I just don't think it's quite that clear cut. Mm -hmm. Now, some may see, be able to see things more clearly because they do have a prophetic call. They are maybe uh, more um, educated in uh, Bible things, but um, God is judging and he's judging as I said, at every level. Mm -hmm. And uh, for us as believers, well, uh, you said you use different words, but got the same message as I would say. Judgment has two parts. I see it as one, a discipline, and then the second is a destruction. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, the, you use redemptive and vengeful. 
Uh, it's the same same concept, different words, but um, God uses whether it, they originate from him or whether he wisely uh, uses things that happen in the natural realm or even he takes the things of Satan that are meant for destruction and turns it for good. Um, he is looking to discipline. I think first, like any parent, uh, again, there it goes, using a human analogy to talk. But uh, uh, we always seek to discipline before we would, in this case, destroy. And God does that. Uh, I remember my kids when they were little, uh, I would uh, tell them that I'm disciplining. I never said I'm spanking you because I'm mad because you're such a horrible kid. But I, I mean, I literally said that. I, it's just the way I, I, my mind functions. And my kids, if they watch this, they would not only affirm it, they'll laugh. But um, because I would say uh, I'm disciplining you to teach you to obey. Uh, there was something redemptive in it. So whatever ways that are happening, uh, seen as judgments. And I, 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 the only thing that I personally would say about our times now, the coronavirus and all this, uh, could it be a judgment of God? I say yes, because it's his prerogative. He can do what he wants. But what I have sensed, and I said, I think a first or second time we met was I believe that it was a judgment of the Lord upon the church. Judgment begins with the house of God. He is trying to shake us and awake us. I said, I thought it was very timely that you felt led of the Lord to talk about attributes because we need to see the exalted Christ again. We need to see God as he really is. And these things are shaking people, loss of income, sickness, death, uh, the unknown, uh, fear that's driving some go crazy. Some is drawing people to Christ. So uh, I see that the the judgment uh, of God is, uh, I think, primarily uh, for discipline. I think that's why he's so patient and so loving and so mercy filled, even in the times of uh, judgment, because he's trying to say, look, I'm just trying to get your attention. I'm trying to shake you and awake you because you're headed the wrong way. Uh, because when you get to the point where judgment is destruction or, as you said, vengeful, vengeful uh, there there is no redemption from that. Uh, if there, that's why wrath is wrath and, um, judgment is not always wrath. So we have to, uh, separate those two, but I also see it as judgment. Uh, you know, if we don't see God as high and lifted up, God will prove himself to us as high and lifted up. He'll say, you know, you think you own the world. You think you reign and rule. Uh, humanism says that we're God. He says, you think so? Okay. Uh, here and he has ways of getting our attention, whether on a personal level or a national level, or in this case, perhaps even a global level. Yeah. So I think it speaks to the glory of God. I think it speaks to the discipline. I think it's a call of really judgment in the sense of uh, re with redemptive purposes. I think is uh, an expression of love, and I think it is also to make a clear distinction between. Uh, what should be a clear distinction between the church uh, and the world. Uh, I'll always remember 1985, your father came to Detroit and he preached a message called Passing Under the Rod. And uh, it was speaking of uh, God placing a judgment, separating the sheep from the goat, the right, righteous and unrighteous. Uh, that has been a, a profound word that stuck with me all these many uh, years. Uh, so God is at work. He is performing his plans and his purposes, and he's seeking to draw men back to him. Mm, that's good, Keith. That's 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 the powerful point of uh, God's redemptive purpose, purposes in in judgment. And you know, speaking of my father in in the eighties, you know, that was the other message that's sort of been gone gone viral now around on the internet uh, about him saying, you know, churches would be closed and bars would be closed and government would be closed, and uh, you know, because of the fierce nature of these things. And I, I don't, you know. He, and knowing him and his message, you know, he was speaking of things even worse than this. He was speaking of nuclear holocaust and and riots in the streets and things like that, which are probably, you know, and and he did and I do as well agree with him. I see these things as judgments of God. And the reason I probably want to err on, the, I don't want to err on the error side, either side, but to, you know, to, to go so soft as to say, and you're not saying that, but the, some are saying that there's no judgments of, of God at all. That was something in the past. Neither of us are saying that. Mm -hmm. But to, to be cautious, I think we need to be cautious on both ends, you know, being cautious of not calling something that 
is clearly of God because the alternative is if God is not doing these things to shake us, everything that can be shaken will be shaken, as Hebrews says. If, if God's not doing it, then it's pretty much attributed to Satan. Well, Satan's doing hurricanes and viruses and stuff, and that's certainly a viable reality, and he, he does these. But I do believe that God is ultimately in control. God is ultimately sovereign. And and, and there's he, no yeah. redemption in whatever Satan would be doing. Right. Yeah, so, so there's no – yeah, that's, that's a great point. No yeah. at at all. So then they're just then they're just – it's just evil unleashed on the earth, and God's sitting back and saying, uh, "I'm not, uh, you know, choosing to do anything about this right now." So, there's something more, there's something more purposeful uh, and meaningful about things happening on the earth that that God is sovereignly um, uh, orchestrating, and, and so that so for, for His purposes of redemption, revival, awakening of the church, and uh, you know, sadly, the church has been. On the opposite end of this, you know, there was, I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but um, there's a video out now about um, somebody interviewed 30 of the so-called top prophets of our generation, and they gave their uh, prophetic predictions for the year 2020 in January of this year. And it's, it's, it was a video tape, so we have recording of that. And you can go through all 30 of these, and all of them were prophesying a year of double portion Year of uh, great favor, year of transfer of wealth from uh, the the evil to the to the godly. So you're going to be doubly rich this year, and uh, the year of great peace and aspiration of all your dreams. And well, you know, out of 30 quote unquote prophets, which I'm not sure any of them really are prophets, if they can't see something coming like this come on the face of the earth that we're in right now, then something is missing. And maybe we need part of the revival we need to be is for pastors to have a spiritual boldness. To get up and say, you know, God is on the move, and God will not be mocked, and God is calling us to repentance, and God is shaking everything that can be shaken, and so, uh, so that there can be a, uh, an awakening again, there can be a, a revival. Otherwise, it's a, uh, it's kind of an opportunity missed, and I, I don't use that word opportunity probably correctly in the sense of, uh, of, um, of, of really, but but it, it is it is a, a dilemma that mm-hmm. that has come about, but that that God and His divine purposes can use. To me, this is what we're talking about, a high view of God. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, why, why even have the attribute of judgment if it's something that's sort of put on the sideline and not being used the same way he uses love? He's not using love and any greater passion or power than he's using his wisdom or his grace or his justice or his judgment. And all these are equally uh, attributes that are distributed in the oneness of God. So we got to close for now. We run, run out of time, uh, but uh, we'll come back next week and let's let's keep on this subject for a little while more because it's pretty it's pretty heavy. And uh, the, you know it, we don't want to close on a, a depressive note and stuff. So so know that God is at work in your life and uh, that that He even if He brings, as Keith said, the fatherly discipline uh, that that He has good purposes for that. And that if you're listening to this today. Don't fear because your heart is not so hardened as to receive that type of judgment that is uh, the the, um, the vindication of your of the wrath of God against you because you would not be listening to this. You would not be learn yearning for more of God. So uh, also, as always, feel free to write us, uh, worldchallenge.org. And any questions you have for Keith or I, we'd be glad to spend some time answering those questions. Um, 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 share this video with others and uh, get the word out because we want to spread the glory of God. Thanks for being with us today. Keith, thanks again for your brilliant insight. I just love talking with you. Thanks, Gary. It's been fun. All right, man. Have a good afternoon. Talk to you later. The Gary Wilkerson Podcast is brought to you by World Challenge, transforming lives through the message and mission of Jesus Christ. Each week, this podcast reaches thousands of listeners. This critical work is made possible by the generous contributions of individuals like you who believe in World Challenge's mission. Thank you for listening and supporting.